I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars and this is my very first Saab. I don't have a lot of experience with the Saab Sonnet 3. This is a 1971 model. Previously I have posted some videos of me racing a Saab Sonnet at the Bonneville Salt Flats. However, that was an earlier two-stroke model. This car has an industrial V4 engine under the hood. Let's take a look around the Sonnet. You can see it has pop-up headlights. Interior looks pretty decent shape. Original owner's manual there, that's probably going to come in very handy. There's some sections of carpet missing. This car does have air conditioning, so these are the air conditioning controls over here. Has what I think is a very nice looking dashboard reminiscent of a Mercedes or possibly the early Hondas. And over here are the regular heater controls. Let's see what's in the glove box. Looks like a couple parts that have fallen off the car. It does have a Blaupunkt radio with tape cassette. This car is floor shift. It has a four speed on the floor. The earlier cars were column shift as you saw in the racing video. One neat feature on these cars is this handle right here. This manually pops up the headlights. Up here where the headliner is coming off, you can see how thin the fiberglass on this car is. This car is all fiberglass. But you can see the light shining through it right there. Around here in the back, there's a little Saab logo there. It says it has air conditioning. Let's open up the hatch. There's the air cleaner. Unfortunately, it was not on the car. Um, so I'm a little concerned about the engine. Got a bunch of all the different fluids for the car. Another bonnet. This one doesn't have holes in the front like the one that's on the car. I'm not really sure why this is in here. Don't know if I need it or not. It looks like we found the battery. Some excess vinyl. This is probably junk. We found the missing carpet pieces. What's this? Just more extra vinyl. Wonder if this car has been recovered on the inside once. So here's the battery tie down. Looks like we have one extra J bolt. Not, it's a little bit bigger than the other ones. So I'm not sure where that goes. Looks like they had the battery disconnected. And we have this grill piece, should be installed up front. And then it looks like what's left is the factory tools. And the spare tire. Let's double check that there's nothing underneath it. There is this little piece right here. I'm not sure if this goes on the car anywhere. It looks kind of homemade, so I don't think it does. But if uh, anyone out there knows what this does, if this does go to the car, put it in the comments below. I just noticed that it looks a lot like the material that is right there. Uh, some, some sort of vent on the headliner or something is falling down. This is pretty neat. There's a little roll bar built into the car, which you would probably want because there's not a whole lot to this car. Let's take a look under the hood. So I've been told a lot of people have taken the air conditioning off of these cars. One, obviously, because it probably takes a lot of power and the engine doesn't make a lot. And secondly, it's kind of in the way of doing anything. So this is a V4 configuration. You can see it uses a really tiny carburetor there. Never worked on one of these, so interestingly, I think it says FOMOCO there. 
So it has a Ford carburetor. They must have used these engines as is. This is the Ford Taunus uh, V4, and it's a 1.5 liter engine. This is my first time working on one of these, so I'm going to be learning right alongside you guys. Looks like this car has a remote oil filter. Wonder if they needed to do that to make the engine fit in this car. Looks like the master cylinder might be really hard to deal with. Everything's hidden under there. So this is probably definitely going to have to go so that I can work on this car. Now looking at the front of the car, this area right here, I think all of these might have headlights here. Maybe not. Looks like there's a blanking plate right here. So I'm not sure if some years didn't have lights here. And unfortunately, I'm also missing the bumper, which I assume attaches into these holes here. And somehow this grill should be held in here. I'm not sure which way is up or down on this. Not really sure what those do either, or even how this is held in. So I'm gonna have to do some more research on this. I also apparently don't have the lenses for the turn signals and the parking lights. So I'm going to have to come up with a set of those. The side marker lights looked real familiar and that's because these are Lucas units. The rear lighting are actually from Hella, so I'm not sure what the front turn signals are going to be, but it is possible maybe those are Lucas and I can find them from a catalog that sells British car parts. I don't like that the air cleaners were left off of this car. Looks like the spark plugs are a little bit of a pain to get to, especially that front one. Um, getting in between the alternator and the engine there. You will be really limited to the amount of tools you can use to get in there. Let's put the car in the air and see if we can get to the crankshaft. Okay, we're underneath the car now. This, this is actually the exhaust because it comes from the two cylinders on each side and then collects right here. Looks like there's a patch in the floor right here. There's the transmission. And then we can barely see the engine up here. We're not really going to get to anything from below, it looks like. And it looks like dropping the oil pan would be an engine out situation. So it looks like besides pulling the starter and changing fluids, there's really nothing that we can do down here. I guess the easiest thing to do would be to put the car into gear and then see if I can rock the car back and forth to turn the engine over. Nope, I'm just getting the front tires, so the engine must be locked up. Well, it looks like there's a lot of work that will need to be done here. This is an engine out situation, just to get that engine to turn over. I did talk to my buddy, Tom Donnie, who runs the Saab Heritage Car Museum in Sturgis, South Dakota. And he said that he does have some engines for me if this one is ruined. So obviously there's a lot of work that needs to be done here, but I have a lot of cars to work on already. So maybe I'll put this car up on the shelf unless there's a lot of interest from the viewers that want to see this car done. So if you want to see me continue with this car, comment below and click subscribe.